Why are borders considered significant? Borders tie people together. It defines the extent of a language, culture, or religion. They separate countries, states, provinces, counties, cities, and towns. A border outlines the area that a particular governing body controls. Most of the contemporary world border was defined by the great powers of the early 20th century. European empires, for example, were responsible for drawing the borders of their vast colonial subjects. These borders drawn for colonial purposes went to define the future of its subjects. Some of these borders are infamous for the territorial disputes they created. Of all European powers, Great Britain stands tall above all when it comes to presiding over demarcation lines that are in the contemporary world considered the most hostile political borders. By the advent of the 20th century, the British had an empire stretching across all 24 time zones. The empire on which the sun never sets was a phrase commonly used to describe the British Empire. It was formed up of protectorates, colonies, dominions, mandates, and territories in every continent. The British Empire held sway over 449 million people, 23% of the world population at the time, and it covered 35 million square kilometer, 24% of the Earth's total land area. But of these 449 million inhabitants, 318 million came from one region. British India. Now fast forward to 1947, both India and Pakistan are independent nations, and their borders are drawn along the Radcliffe Line, named after Sir Cyril Radcliffe. If look at this new map, we can see India in the middle, Pakistan on the left, and another part of Pakistan to the right. But now in 2021, we call this nation Bangladesh. But how did Pakistan end up with Bangladesh? Partition of Bengal was the primary reason for East Bengal to be part of Pakistan, and this partition was decided along the lines of religion. West Bengal had a population of 21.2 million, of whom 5.3 million or roughly 25% were Muslim minorities, whereas East Bengal had 39.1 million people, of whom 11.4 million or roughly 30% were predominantly Hindu minorities. They became part of Pakistan only on the basis of one common factor, religion. East Bengal becoming part of Pakistan proved to be a major issue as half of its citizens in the newly formed nation were on the other side of India. According to the 1951 census, the Dominion of Pakistan, both East and West Pakistan, had a population of 75 million people, in which West Pakistan had a population of 33.7 million, and East Pakistan had a population of 42 million. The official language was one of many issues Muhammad Ali Jinnah, the first governor general of Pakistan had to confront. He yielded to the demands of West Pakistanis. Thus Urdu became the official language of Pakistan. Many minorities were upset by this move, but it was not just the minorities, but the majority hated this move too. Majority in this case, being Bengalis who represented 55% of Pakistan, resorted to violence. This wasn't the only issue facing the newly formed Pakistan, West Pakistan dominated the divided country politically and received more money from the federal budget. West was made up of different ethnic groups like Punjabis, Pashtuns, Sindhis, and many others, while the East was dominated by Bengalis. All these differences further the cause for Bangladesh's independence. In 1970, Bangladesh was hit by a tornado. At least 500,000 people lost their lives in the storm, primarily as a result of the storm surge that flooded much of the low-lying islands of the Ganges Delta. The Pakistani government was criticized for its delayed handling of relief operations following the storm, both by local political leaders in East Pakistan and in the international media. In the month of December in 1970, Pakistan held its general election, its first national election since independence, in which voting took place in 300 constituencies, of which 162 were in East Pakistan and 138 in West Pakistan. The Awami League led by Sheikh Mujibur Rahman which won an absolute majority of 160 seats, all of their seats, were in East Pakistan, whereas the Pakistan People's Party won only 81 seats, all in West Pakistan, 
and this was a problem for both the president, Yahya Khan, and the leader of Pakistan People's Party, Zulfikar Ali Bhutto. They did not want a party that only one in the East to rule the entire nation. They had a good reason to not want the East to form the government. Meanwhile, the East, if they were to form the government, wanted to execute the six-point movement, a set of compromises that would have decentralized the entire nation of Pakistan. These include reducing the federal government's authority to only two subjects, defense and foreign affairs. They also wanted to establish separate currencies, granting the power of taxation and revenue collection to the states, and a separate military force and navy headquartered in East Pakistan. President Yahya Khan and many West Pakistani officials tried to negotiate with the Awami League, he even went on to appoint Nurul Amin as prime minister, a prominent Bengali politician, one of the only two Bengali leaders who were not part of the Awami League. But things didn't work out and the East was barred from taking power. Following days revolts ensued in East Pakistan, and the military responded with violent crackdowns against the rebelling Bengalis. West Pakistani politicians desperately tried to prevent the inevitable, but they knew they were failing, so they devised a planned military operation to curb the Bengali nationalist movement. So commenced Operation Searchlight. It was estimated that between 200,000 to 3 million Bengalis were killed from the ensuing genocide and nearly 400,000 Bengali women were raped. As a result of the conflict, a further 8 to 10 million people, mostly Hindus, fled the country to seek refuge in neighboring India. As a response to this, Pakistan led military intervention. Bengali nationalists declared independence and formed the Bangladeshi National Liberation Army. Between 26 March 1971 till December 1971, rebel forces held the countryside during the war and conducted wide-ranging guerrilla operations against Pakistani forces. As a result, almost the entire country, except for the capital Dhaka came under the control of the newly formed provisional government. On 3 December 1971, India joined Bangladesh in its fight for independence. With the help of the Indian Army, Bangladesh defeated Pakistan on 16 December 1971. The Pakistani supremacy lasted two and a half decades. With its end, religion and the two-nation theory fell on the way. A nation that was born from the ashes of war. Bangladesh became the seventh most populous nation in the world.